Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Caroline Snits. My name is Caroline and I live in Scotland with my husband Ben, um, our dog Fela who is next to me trying to sleep um, so you might see her pop up today. Um, I live in Scotland as I said but I am originally Danish. Um, in May I will be celebrating three years of knitting. Um, I started knitting as a lockdown hobby to cope um, with um, postponing my wedding, being so far away from my family, all of these things um, and it is now a massive part of my life. Um, I've been documenting my knitting here on YouTube since I think my first podcast episode was December 2020 so um, plenty to look back on um, and I've definitely developed a lot but if you're curious to see just how far I've gotten um, obviously all the videos are there. Um, I'm just going to put out there that I am really really tired today and actually it was like <laughs> should I film or should I just um, wait for another day where I'm feeling slightly more awake um, but I decided that I may as well give it a go so if you see this it turns out um, I could fake it till I made it um, but if you don't then um, I guess I will be recording another video um, but it's just we've hit you know with podcasts you always have to time it just right um, because you want to have enough to show but not too much to show um, and I feel like just now it's just a perfect time um, because later on in April we're going back to Denmark and I have a gift I'll be dropping off so um, here we are today. Um, let's start out I always like to, to sort of go with the usual format I should also say um, that as usual all my links are down below so you can find me on Instagram um, where I also go by Caroline, Caroline Snits um, and my Ravelry where I always keep um, all the yarn amounts and size and all of this as much information as I can be um, asked to put in um, that's all on Ravelry so I have that link down below and for each pattern I tend to write down um, I, I tend to have a link to the designer and the pattern um, the yarn I've used and the colours and all of this so if you're ever curious all of that is always down below and I feel like that's enough of an intro um, let's get started with the actual knitting content so today I am wearing um, my latest finished big garment so this is the semper sweater um designed by my lovely friend sophie from the knit pearl girl um it is this lovely v neck um racklin um it's um quite a timeless classic piece um it is definitely advanced beginner friendly you do have you know you do have to do some things that can be difficult but i certainly don't think you need to be a very advanced knitter especially as the pattern is very, very detailed. Um, I'm just gonna, because I'm tired, I thought I better write down notes or I will forget. Um, as, um, as I said, it is very much a timeless piece and I definitely didn't swatch as carefully as I could, um, but I feel like now that you can see it on, I think the fit is just as I would want it. Um, and the V-neck is deep enough that it's flattering. Um, you can see that I am wearing a black top underneath and it just about goes to that kind of edge. So for me, it's not deeper than I could wear it at work or um, especially if I had a shirt underneath, um, but it's still like flashing, like if it's too higher up, it just, I feel like it looks a bit funky. Um, I also think it's a big credit to Sophie's pattern um, because there's no doubt that my gauge is off in some way or another. Um, but the fact it still turned out good, I will give her credit for excuse me credit for it does have a little bit of a deeper armpit um after blocking but i just find that's more comfortable um i've spoken about the the yarn quite a few a few times um so i won't go into too much detail about it but basically this was a wedding present from my lovely knitting friends sophie included um and um, basically they bought me the hand dyed surreal pack of silk and then the camel silk, um, which is my other strand, was kindly gifted by Sakami as a wedding present. So in some way it's sort of an ad, but in some ways I don't really see it as an ad because um, in contrast to other things, I don't think, um, you know, the goal was to get any form of advert out of me. It was just um, part of, of the order of this um, one of a kind hand dyed uh, cereal pack of silk. Um, now I can speak a little bit more about the softness because let me tell you 
this sweater is buttery soft. Um, I've said this before, but um, this is my fourth sweater in Baby Sew Alpaca Silk um, from Sakami, and then I have a fifth one that is not in Hand Dye John from Sakami, but also in the same kind of base. And what I find is that they do wear surprisingly well, especially considering their softness. You will over time obviously get a little bit of killing here um, where there's friction. Um, but something that I find is different from normal my hair is that you go, oh, I'm trying to see if I can get the focus just right. I don't think I can, I probably need to cover up my face. Anyway, I don't think you can really see that properly. But what I find is that the halo that you get from Surreal Packer is a slightly softer brushed kind of look than maybe what you get with my hair but I do find that you get a lot more softness from it. I don't find any of the, the yarns from Takami that I've knitted in to be particularly bad for pilling. Obviously this is fairly fresh like made, like freshly made so I haven't worn it that much but um, like if you look at my underlay I'm not like covered in in any sort of like lots of bits of yarn. Um, so I think, again, it's something I would really recommend, especially if you've knitted with my head before and don't like the feel of it. Um, Baby Surrey does run slightly shorter um, because it's not a true lace weight, but I have never found it to the really effect gauge. Obviously you should always swatch, so I would recommend that you do that, especially if you substitute, but as a whole, this is just a so much softer alternative to my hair if you're not that keen on it. And obviously camel silk is just wonderfully soft and comfortable. Um, and I think it's given quite a neutral base um, that lets this shine. Um, I will probably have shown you the cutaways already, but it does have ever so slight pulling across the chest, but I have been reassured that it's only me who notices it and no one else notices. Um, so it's probably just one of those things that when you make something you're much more conscious of. Um, but yeah, the yarn is very, very comfortable. When I was finishing it up, first of all, I knew that I wanted to knit this proper full length. I do have a tendency to knit things a teeny tiny bit too short when they're actually worn. So if I try them on and stand up, often they'll feel long enough. But then I just find that in day-to-day -day wear, I often wish I had another five centimetres. So um, one of the modifications I did was that um, when I knitted the length, I didn't care what length I knitted it to. Um, for the sleeves, I actually followed exactly according to pattern, um, didn't make any changes um, to the sleeve length. Um, but what I did do last time I showed, showed you um, that on one sleeve I'd done the tabular cast off, uh, which essentially means you do um, a round of double knitting before you bind off and it kind of creates this like slightly um, squishier, thicker bind off and it just didn't look good. I don't know if it was the yarn choice, if it was how I knitted it, I don't know what it was but it just, I just didn't like the look of it, it flared weird, I didn't, yeah, it just was no good so I actually just basically tinked um, my bind off. I decided that was the easiest and then I reused the yarn and just undid um, the, the well it's technically two rows um, to do one round of um, double knitting I undid that and then I just did one normal round of rip so that I would still have you know an extra round of length um, and then I just bound off using the Italian method instead and you still get that seamless bind off look but without having to have all the double knitting faff um, so I'm glad that I did that on the first sleeve, um, like just undid it because I did have my concerns um, about doing the tubular because it's, I think I've only done it once. Um, so it's not a technique I usually go for. And um, when I finished the second sleeve, I did it the normal way just to see if I preferred it, well not the normal way, the Italian way, just to see if I preferred it and I definitely did. So I just decided to stick with that um, and yeah. Um, the final thing I should say is that um, when I had finished it, the, the sleeves were quite short. Um, they were probably like just a tiny bit too short for true bracelet, brace, brace, bracelet length. Um, and I do prefer my sleeves slightly longer. So 
I just blocked it really aggressively, just pulled it as much as I could, tucked on it um, when I um, had washed it and the, um, you know, I was squeezing out all of the excess water. I just left it a teeny tiny bit more damp than I would usually do just so that I knew the fibres were wet enough to be moulded into place and as you can tell it has grown beautifully. They are um, sort of like mid-hand if I really pull them but in day-to-day -day wear they're just about wrist length which is exactly the type of length that I like. Um, so these fibres are perfect for that because they're nice and soft and I haven't had much um, like spring back, like it hasn't gone back to the original length. So all in all, really happy with this. It definitely makes me want to make more of the Semper sweater or Semper patterns in general. I know um, obviously just the original Semper, which doesn't have the deep v-neck. And then I think Sophie's bringing out um, like a vest version of both the normal neck and the v-neck. If not, it might be an out already. And then I think there's plans maybe for a cardigan, I'm not sure. Um, but they are, you know, the perfect kind of timeless patterns. Um, I don't want to say like straightforward or boring or um, those kind of negative words because I do think this is really timeless. And I did, I did want something where the yarn could really shine and um, the design wouldn't like detract from what I was using. Um, so that's another reason why I would knit it again because I think you get a bit of everything, you know. Um, the v-neck is really flattering. I really like how she's designed it. It has just the right kind of thickness and yeah, 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Well done, Sophie. That's all I'm going to say. Otherwise, we'll be here forever. Now we move on to um, my next finished object. And for this, I am quickly going to um, talk about something. Um, so if you have watched me since I very first began, you may have noticed that it is incredibly rare um, that I knit for other people and um, you'll notice that actually today I am um, I have this finished object for one person and I have another gift knit on my needles and I wanted to talk a bit about um, gift knitting and the concept of it. Um, I know that some people like to say oh it's like ego knitting or selfish knitting or all of these kind of terms to describe it when you as a crafter make things for yourself and personally for me I don't like those terms very much I don't think it's selfish that you take the amount of time that I have um, to learn how to knit and then decide that you mainly want to use it on yourself um, you know I, I know historically knitting was together with many other sort of crafts it was something you shared about because if you didn't knit, you know, thick woolly socks for your partner, he couldn't just go to a shop and buy them. Um, same with a sweater. Um, but nowadays, you know, people could, people can easily get by without hand knitted items. I certainly did before I started knitting. And so I don't actually feel very much guilt about not knitting for other people. I think sometimes it irks me when people are very much like, oh, what are you going to make for this or that? And... Um, I kind of hate the, like, the pressure that people can put on to like monopolise your knitting time um, and it's something I've thought a lot about. Obviously I did the video on why I won't be a designer which is about how in current society it's very much about how can you monetize your hobby or like how can you hustle and earn more money and all of this. And I think gift knitting comes kind of under that, right? It's like once you become good at something, if you could sell it, you should sell it. If it could bring other people joy, you should brag about how it could bring other people joy by making them things. And really what's important to me is that my hobby brings me joy. And if what brings me joy is only knitting things for myself, that's what I'm going to do. If it brings me joy to give something to someone who I know will appreciate it, that's what I'll do. If it brings you joy to knit garments and sell them, then that's what you should do. But I just don't like this whole selfish um, if you make something for yourself because knitting should have an element of selfish no matter who you're making it for because if you're not enjoying it you shouldn't be forcing yourself to knit basically um, and yeah it's just something I've reflected on because as I'm working through my stash I have a lot of full project um, quantities and I don't foresee myself using 
those quantities on someone else because I very much bought them with myself in mind. But I do have, you know, the kind of oddball um, stash that is, you know, whatever's left over from projects. And many of those yarns are really, really lovely. And I do quite like the idea that some of the things I make from that would go to other people than just myself because there's a limit to just how many hats I need or whatever. Um, and um, this particular yarn, the project I'm about to show you, um, the first, the very first time I, um, well, not the very first time, but like when the yarn arrived, I just saw it and I thought of my auntie. Um, it's very much a her colour. And when I finished the project that the yarn was used for, my sweater number 18, I messaged her, because uh, I wanted to make sure I had yarn left over, I messaged her and said, you know, I have some of this yarn left over, would you like a project? And I sent her um, a few ideas. So um, my first thought was um, the Sophie scarf, um, but I also sent her the Lau, Lau Lu shawl by Sari Nordlin and kind of suggested that it could be something along those lines. And she said she thought she would get the most use out of the Sophie scarf. So that's what I went with. Um, but personally, I know I enjoy the process of making something so much more. If I know the recipient knows what they're about to receive and I know it's something that they'll use and like, because so many hours go you know, into any project um, that you kind of want to make sure that you know whoever receives it will like it. Now, I feel like if I'd gone I know my, my auntie is very knit worthy and would have been happy with whatever I made her. Um, but it's funny, I, I discussed it with my mum yesterday because I have another, as I said, gift knit and I was talking about that. And we did have that chat because, for example, my mum is very sensitive to wool. Um, so she's probably less knit worthy in the sense that if I knitted her, like even a sweater like this that I consider very, very soft, um, she might just... Honestly, she would probably find it itchy. Um, and so it doesn't really make sense to knit her lots of things because she would never wear a woolly, woolly sweater. But anyway, my auntie, um, back to the original project. So um, I thought I'd better roll it up as a little croissant. But um, this is the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. It was all over Instagram when it first came out. Um, it is not a complex pattern at all. Um, and it could styled in a multitude of ways but um, I guess the main way you would kind of wear it is probably along this this way um, so it sits like this I'm just trying not to get loads of makeup on it because it is freshly washed and blocked um, I'm still to take um, FO photos of this so I will probably do that before I am going to give it away when I go to Denmark, but this is what it looks like. It's not com like very complex. Essentially, you have um, you knit, knit an eye cord at the same time that you do increases and decreases. And that's literally all it is. Now, I don't know if you can already tell now. Let's see what is the true midpoint. This is the true midpoint. You might already be able to tell now that while it's not a very complex pattern, I still managed to make a mistake. <laughs> um, I've clearly either done too many increases or too many decreases. I can see here there's a bit of a funny, funny ball shout, so I reckon that's probably where the mistake is. Um, and I realised that when I was coming to the end of um, the sort of decrease side, and I just kind of budged it. At the end of the day, this is a scarf that will be, you know, tied around someone's neck. I'm not sure anyone will hold it up and say, oh, 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 not the exact same width. Um, so yeah, I just chopped it off. <laughs> um, I made a few, I don't know if they're true muds, but basically the yarn I'm using is Lanagato Feeling. It is a um, 70% merino, 20% silk and 10% cashmere blend. So it is really lovely and soft and also, I don't know if you can tell, but it's very, very drapey and obviously in got to stitch it will be even drapier. So that's the yarn I used. Um, it was, as I said, left over from my sweater number 18 where I'd held it with a second strand, but I just wanted to use it up for this. I had three, basically three full balls left and I realised that because it's DK weight and the gauge that um, the Sophie 
sure has like it's a it's more like worsted weight i knew that the yarn like this dk weight yarn it also runs a little bit on the thinner side for dk it's definitely not fingering weight um but it's certainly not like true true dk if that makes sense so i knew that like trying to knit it at a worsted sorry i'm just trying to readjust because i'm managed to place myself really awkwardly um that trying to knit it at a worsted weight worsted weight gauge was just never gonna work it was it would be way too thin and i think even now you can probably tell it it reflects quite a lot of light through it um, but not more than I think once you wear it and it's tied, it's not too loose a gauge. But because I had three balls of it, it wasn't enough for sure. The gauge wouldn't have been worked, been right. I had some of the baby soy left over, but I'm using that for another project um, that I had planned. And so I didn't really have many choices. But what I basically decided to do is that the pattern recommends that you knit it at uh, 3.5 millimeter needles and I just thought I'll knit it on four not gauge swatch and just kind of see <laughs> what size I end up with and I actually think it's quite a good size it's long enough that you can very comfortably tie it around your neck I also knitted the bigger size there's two sizes in the pattern I just knitted the bigger size and as I said just on slightly bigger needles and I think it worked out really well um I think for that size if you if you know for the large size if you knit it in the original yarn on original needles with original gauge i think you're using just under 25 grams and this weighs with the cut off ends um i just chopped off the last ones that i had we've uh, woven in um, and then gave it a good block so it's so funny not going anywhere um but i just cut them off so you can't see it um but i kept them off those when i weighed it um and it was 51 grams so essentially for for one ball of this yarn i got a whole scarf and i completely understand why this pattern is so popular because it's again it's a great way that if you do buy a slightly fancier more expensive yarn you could easily get a really lovely project out of it it's not too time consuming or doesn't require that much headspace clearly it required more than i gave it considering i made a mistake but yeah all in all i'm really happy with it and i do have i definitely also still have two balls left um and i don't know what i'm going to make with those i might make something for my cousin i may make something for me but yeah i would i would quite like to get all of this lanagato feeling out of my stash because i think it's quite giftable a uh, yarn composition composition and color so that's my second finished object time for a sip of water i think you know it's funny because the main way i can tell right now that i am tired is that i keep being so clumsy <laughs> with the way i'm phrasing myself it's like things just like trying to to put things into words I'm, that's really what i'm struggling with so i do apologize i have also noticed that i've said mm, eh, ah, a lot more today than i would usually do which is always annoying when you're editing i often find another funny thing when hello baby when i edit edit um when i've been really tired is that i sit like eyes half closed so hopefully i've not been too bad today right and um, now moving on to whips i am going to start with the first one and there's going to be some rustling so um, i'm going to allow some silence so i can cut it out here we go my um first work in progress so i cast this on shortly um shortly after i started the sophie scarf because i just wanted to get this underway there's no rush <laughs> oh is it tough life fever there's no rush to finish this project really um it's one that i am knitting purely um because i'd like to have it at some point um as we are moving into more spring season i would definitely like another cardigan so i decided to cast on a cardigan here it is you can see i have made very little progress even though it feels like i've been knitting on this for months this is the waffle cardigan by knitting for olive it is an all over lace cardigan um, that um, has raglan in creases and it has a um, what's this called the button band is knitted on um, at the same time so you basically will be picking up 
more or less my stitches obviously you'll be picking up at the underarm I presume when you put stitches on hold but um you're not you're not having to to pick up you know anything else which is exactly what I wanted for a cardigan another reason I thought an all-over lace cardigan would be good is that you don't have the um, knitting stockinette stitch flat and you won't have any gauge issues so that's that's really why I chose this pattern. I know my favourite thing Snitwear has a pattern that has a similar sort of lace all over. I can't remember what cardigan number it is but her cardigan um, version it does have a, a dropped shoulder and I just thought I would get more use out of a um, of a raglan to be honest. I just think it'll look neater and also I hate picking up stitches so I was glad to avoid it. Um, actually this pattern choice was suggested by my lovely friend Sophie um, from the Knit Pearl Girl. I think she tested this pattern, the knitting for Olive, when they translated it to English. Um, so she has actually made it and I'm very impressed because it has not been an easy journey. I'm going to talk about the yarn later, I've decided. So let's talk about all the issues that I have had with this. First of all, you start off with essentially, I can't remember what this is called in English and it's not very professional that I've not looked it up, but essentially you start with the cast on that you would use for top socks. So essentially you cast on over two stitches or two stitches, two needles, and then you knit in the round from the beginning. And what that has done is that these edges are obviously neat because it's essentially like this neckband is a massive toe, right? And now that I've knitted it, it makes a lot more sense to me. But when I very first began this, it, it honestly made no sense. So I started out really badly by casting on too few stitches, which is just typical me. Oh, no, too many, I think. And I discovered that when I came to the first button band, or oh, button band, first button hole, and I realized that my stitches didn't fit with what the pattern asked for. So I ripped that all out, started over. And when I got to the end of this, I um to the of the neck band, I realized that once again it seemed like my stitch count didn't fit, but I definitely counted um several times. So I have no idea. I might just have knitted something down wrong, but I tinked it all back. No idea what happened. But I just decided to fudge it and um I don't notice the neck band. I'm sure it will look it looks completely non-straight now, but that's always how it works when you're like staring at your piece of work too much. But I don't think it was like worse than I could get on with it. Then now we we're on to like the lace part and the short rows, um, you start with short rows and they are described, you know, like written out, they're not charted. And you would think I could be good at that, but honestly, nightmare. I had put little stitch markers to designate I designate each section and then obviously I had a different type of stitch marker to to show me where to do a raglan increases then there was a row where I'd clearly done the increases in the wrong place I tried to take that back I'm not sure how well I managed that because then there's just so much excess fabric and I just again kind of budged it till it worked I'm fairly certain it was on the back and I was like hopefully it will just block out and looking at it now oh I can't I can't see where it was anymore, but it was a nightmare. It took me a whole evening to sort. And I still haven't figured out what they mean by these stitches. Um, so like, obviously you have the, the knitter on um, button band, but I, I don't understand how it's described in the pattern should give the result that they're kind of asking for. So I've also, even though I knitted it the same on every round, I've had to drop stitches and fix them on, an, on the bottom band because one of the, like, some of them turned out as pearl stitches when they weren't meant to, which was a nightmare. So I fixed that. The lace has caused me lots of issues. I've, I don't know why. It's not a particularly complicated lace pattern. It's kind of obvious it's a mixture of knits and pearls and some yarn overs and decreases around it to create the sort of like lazy, lazy part. Yet, still goes me issues. Every time I've done a Racklin increase, I have to really look at the pattern because otherwise I honestly don't know what stitch it's going to turn into. It has not been easy. And um, I still don't understand how frequently they want you to do the bottom, like the bottom holes. 
I think I spoke to Lissy um, from Hive Knits in like this weekend and I was telling her, you know, all the issues I've had and I asked for her opinion. And I think we've kind of made up our mind about how it might work, but honestly, no clue if I'm going to end up doing it right. And this is my general experience with knitting for olive patterns. They're very long but they're not always detailed in just the right places like it wasn't it didn't say oh you you're casting on this way for the neck band because it creates a neat edge on you go or it doesn't you know on the chart it would have been useful if it had just marked up or oh, this is the row where you should be doing a button band or like I just feel like there's the button band section makes no sense at all and I just feel like there's there's quite a lot of that that just doesn't really seem sensible to me um, I also find it really weird that when you do the raglan increases, even you always do a like a, a knit increase and not a pearl increase, even though on the next round the increase will then turn into a pearl, which I don't know if it's just to keep this line looking quite neat, but I find that really confusing why you wouldn't do a pearl, but then there's one pearl increase on the wrong side right. This whole pattern basically has made me feel like a complete beginner. Um, honestly, I, I read this pattern and I've questioned if I'm really as good of a knitter as I thought I was, <laughs> um, because it's constant, I'm constantly fixing mistakes and that's also why it hasn't moved any faster. I'm starting to get to grips with how the lace work, like the lace section itself works. And so I think once I'm kind of make up my mind what I'm going to do with the button bands, um, and I just finished the raglan increases. Once all of that is over, it should be pretty plain sailing from there. Um, but I have to say getting to this stage has not been easy. And so far, I would say this pattern is probably the top of difficulty I have ever knitted, simply because deciphering the pattern has taken me hours and hours. <laughs> um, but the design is beautiful. And I don't necessarily, you know, we all have different preferences. Like I remember buying a pattern from a designer um, whom I know plenty of people really like the designer's designs and I just couldn't get on with the pattern. It just, again, didn't make much sense to me. I can, for example, tell when I've tested for my favourite things that the more I knit her patterns, the more I understand exactly what she's trying to say because you know, the more you knit from one designer, the more used to the kind of writing style you get and the more preferences you develop. And there's absolutely no doubt that in the industry, um, I personally find that, for example, petite knit patterns, I never struggle with in the same kind of way. It's very rare that I don't understand her patterns because they're just the right level of brief. So you're not trying to wade through, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs of explanation and text and things to keep in mind and lots of really long tips. But at the same time, it's not so brief that you kind of miss out on the understanding of why you're doing a certain thing. And I find my favourite thing slipwear is kind of like that too. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm just used to a very specific kind of Scandinavian writing style. The puppy has curled up behind me. It's very sweet. So yeah, um, you can also tell put on the first button. This is something I am trying to do because I find that I... This is like not putting on buttons is something that could honestly put me off finishing the project because it's one of those finishing things that no one likes to do like 10 buttons in one go but somehow it feels less bad to do one button here one button there and um honestly the, the bad luck with this continued because i know that i bought buttons for this exact yarn and then i couldn't find them i just couldn't find them anywhere in my button stash and it's really not that big so I ordered new buttons, said new buttons arrived and the same evening I looked through my button stash again and I found a million buttons that all worked. <laughs> so um, the buttons I ordered aren't actually the buttons I've put on. I think these Mother of Pearls um, buttons that doesn't have the front thing that you sew through, um, it just has like the little loop you, you do around the back. I think these are from Knit and I bought them ages ago, like I don't even know when I bought them. It bought them. It's a very, very long time ago. And I just thought that Mother of Pearl would, would quite go with, with this. I love Mother of Pearl uh, buttons. They're always my favourite. Um, so I went with those. And then I was ready to sew them on. Really excited to get going, get the sewing started. And then I couldn't find any sewing needles. And all my sewing needles had just disappeared. 
from where they usually live. And luckily, just before I was about to order one night, I was like, I'm gonna, I thought I checked it all, like squashed the bag that they're usually in, checked all the pockets, had disappeared. But then of course, the one night I was like, right, if I don't find them tonight, I'm ordering some new needles, like sewing needles, because all the buttons were too tight to use tapestry needles. And then of course they turned up. Um, so yeah, I managed to sew my button on. I just used one strand of the my hair um, because from my experience, if you are sewing buttons onto yarn, often yarn works the best. It just sticks much better to the fabric, whereas um, sewing thread I find can be a little bit too thin and it's hard to really get that hold. So that's that's why I went for that. Um, and I think it, it looks really nice. And I think once it's done, it will be good. Um, it's funny looking at this colour now. Um, so to move onto the yarn, I'm holding three strands of a yarn you have actually never seen me knit in before. This is Drops Kid Silk. And um, the reason I decided to cast on this project, I'm sure you can tell that I clearly <laughs> not had a really fun nor easy time getting started on this project but the reason I decided I've decided to kind of stick with it um again I'm in no rush to finish it I'm just gonna enjoy it is because basically when I kind of got to the end of my last test knit and I finished the semper sweater I didn't have a big sweater project on my needles and I almost always do I didn't really know what I fancied and I'm sure other knitters know that feeling like so much in my stash I would love to knit but I just I didn't have like an immediate this is exactly what I'm casting on if you've been watching for a while you may know that I'm trying to decrease my yarn stash this year and so what I decided to do was essentially I just thought I will pick the oldest yarn in my stash that I have a full sweater slash cardigan quantity of and I'm going to start with that and that's simply just because I was like, at least I may as well start with the yarn that I have clearly just left lying for as long as possible and not work with. It's, as I've said in the stash video, I don't really have any full projects where I'm like, oh, this colour is horrific, I'd never pick that anymore. Or, um, like, I don't really have anything where I'm like, this I would de-stash because I'd just be de-stashing to buy another project's worth in the future. I, in general, think my taste has changed, but maybe not changed that much. However, the reason you've never seen me knit in Drops Kid Silk at any other point is that I, when I very, very first started knitting, I do have a video that covers everything I knitted in my first year. I started out with the wool and the gang, like everyone probably did at least at that time. And then I bought from Loop London, I spent a fortune and I bought, because I didn't understand how much yarn really was, and I really struggled to find cheap alternatives. And Wool and the Gang is also really expensive, so after buying a, a sweater's quantities worth of crazy sexy wool, I don't even think I questioned how much this project would have cost. Um, but then I knitted the Sunday sweater, which was like the first pattern I really fell in love with, and I was desperate in it. So I bought a, a sweater's quantities worth of Camel also sniff milk, which is still one of my favourite yarns, and um, held with Isa silk my hair. Now, when I very first started knitting, I was a lot more sensitive to wool than I am now. I've spoken about that many a times, but when I very first started knitting, like everything felt kind of itchy to me. And so I was quite nervous about my hair because I heard lots of people found it itchy and I was saying, what if I buy, you know, like a whole sweater's quantities worth of my hair and find Find it horrible so then I ordered this yarn and as I was knitting up the Sunday sweater and finished it I realized that I found that sweater fine to wear against bare skin again I was a new knitter I probably understand a lot more why I wouldn't have found it itchy even if it had been not as nice in my hair but anyway I was I thought well the composition of my hair seems to be the same across the board surely there can't be that much difference between Isak silk my hair compared to say Drops Kid Silk and so I ordered a three strands worth of Drops Kid Silk um, for a project that 
um, it's the Snorl Rib Sweater by Nissin Follow, which is this all over three stranded, uh, three strand of my hair um, cable sweater. And I've just changed my mind on it because I think I would get much more use out of a lazy cardigan. But that's what I ordered it for originally. And it, it obviously is quite a big like cost difference. Like I don't know what you buy ECR silk my hair like at the moment. I think it's gone up in price. But at that time, you know, one ball was about eight fifty. That was about what I eight fifty no like pounds. Um that's about what I would have expected to pay for one ball of it. And for a three strand project, and at the time I was also a considerably like my bus size was probably about 15 centimeters bigger than it is now, so I would have been at least a size bigger, if not two. So I needed like 300 grams for that cable sweater, and I was like, if I am to buy 300 grams of ECL silk my hair, it's going to be a small fortune. So um, that's why, in the end, I decided to go for Jobs Kid Silk. And long story short, um, I picked this colour because what I probably wanted was some kind of knitting for olive colour. This screams um, actually a yarn that I later knitted in, um, which might be called Dot Plum. It's one of the pinkish colours because um, I later test knit it for knitting for olive and I essentially picked this colour because clearly I hadn't gotten it out of my system. Um, this is the colour Malva um, from Drops. And um, I probably ordered that because I was dreaming of knitting for Olive but refusing to spend the money on it because all jobs could still must be the same kind of thing. Then it arrived and I remember when I touched it I was like... <laughs> I just did not like it as much in the flesh. And I now have obviously knitted with considerably more my hair. I don't know how many brands I've knitted with by now but um, I've knitted with a lot and I have obviously a much better understanding of fibre now and for the money I think Drops Kid Silk, if that's what you can afford, it's still very lovely Kid Silk. Um, knitted up in the three strands, you do, it does get much um, fluffier, you, like, right here as I'm looking at it, it kind of looks like it has no fluff but I can see I can fluff it up if I want to. But the softest my hair I have ever knitted with is the Issa my hair so like I feel like you had drops kid silk on, on like one end of the my hair spectrum and then you probably have Issa on the other end of like niceness right and I just think the contrast was so much darker stark the contrast was so stark back then because I also had less experience of what yarn felt like so that's kind of why it's lived in my stash since then because when the yarn arrived I loved the colour of it, but the the yarn itself just didn't really spark me with that much joy. And it it's honestly why I've never bought any more of it. Um, I also think if you if you look at drops, they aren't very obvious um, about the sort of like ethical basis of their yarns. If you look on their website, they basically just say we are ethical. Dot, <laughs> and then that's kind of it. And I think um, obviously you become. I've definitely become less black and white with time. You know, when I very first began, I would have said never buying Drops Kid Silk again. Maybe after this project, I'll be a convert. I don't know yet. Um, and I also think on the ethical side, I've become less black and white, simply because yarn is, is an expensive hobby. And yeah, I think black and whiteness doesn't help any of us, right? Um, just like if you prefer to knit in acrylics, like if I had to knit a sweater for my mum, I basically had to knit it in either acrylic or cotton or she wouldn't be able to wear it. So anyway, um, that's why it stayed there for so long because yeah, just didn't love the feel of it and I kind of realised that it might be time to finally knit it up because I do think this is quite a very, like a wearable colour for me. It's nice and bright um, but still neutral um, as we go into spring and summer. It's going to be perfect in Scotland, just over white or black t-shirt, worn with jeans. Um, I need a dress that have these kind of colours in it. Like I, I keep dreaming of finding like a flowery dress where this would fit on top. So I am really happy to, to work this up because um, as part of the whole knitting through my stash business, obviously if... Um, if I was knitting purely to get down the weight of my stash as quick as humanly possible, I would just have gone for all my, you know, worsted and errand weight projects as soon as I could. 
because obviously they are going to weigh more than a DK weight or fingering weight or whatever. However, I'm not trying to rush through my stash. For me, there's a difference between working through my stash and enjoying it and finding joy because even with all of these problems I've had with the waffle cardigan, I'm still actually really enjoying working on it. I have moments where I just want to take the project and just throw it across the room, but still I keep going back to it and I'm kind of excited to figure it out and get it finished and I'll be dead proud when I do. And I think it's the perfect time to start it because at the moment, um, my mojo is at an all time high. I am obsessed with knitting at the moment. I feel like I kind of, it's kind of at the same time tied to an issue of like, as you can probably tell by me saying I was really tired today, that I have just had less headspace somehow. So like I'm desperate to knit, but I also keep making stupid mistakes because I seem incapable of reading a knitting pattern, even though I've done it so many times by now. And that's also why um, I just want to apologise to all my knitting podcast friends. I have not been good enough at keeping up. The past few days, I've slowly been catching back up on podcasts. But what also comes with like a really high level of knitting mojo, but not great output. Because um, obviously, if you keep making mistakes, you're not flying through a project, are you? And I feel like even even though I don't feel like I've been knitting less, I think I have um, because I've been, you know, going to bed slightly earlier, getting up for CrossFit. I've been more tired through the day. So finding less time doing the date in it, the little menace obviously always needs me, etc, etc. So my output has been lower. And I find that when you have a high knitting mojo, but, you know, less output, sometimes watching podcasts can be so frustrating because you see everyone else making a certain amount and you want to cast everything on and do everything and you're so inspired but you just cannot you know your output cannot keep up with your mojo or your inspiration so um I had to take a little bit of a, a back seat um for a little while just to not like frustrate myself to no end but um I can feel it slowly coming back and I'm trying to remind myself it's you know it's not a race it's not a sprint um I just have to enjoy it, just take it as it comes and the speed it comes. And however much I knit through this year is however much I knit through this year. If I'm honest, I already feel happier with my my choices this year. Um, you know, I did have um the one sponsored test knit for Louise. I don't I don't think I'm gonna be on a testers list again, as you could probably tell I'm a, the world's slowest knitter. Um, at least compared to other testers, so um so I think for the, you know, I don't foresee a lot of sponsored test knits coming my way. I kind of don't mind that. It's been nice to pick something out of the drawer and just start knitting it and enjoying it. Um, so yeah, that's my first whip. And um, let me check how long have I been talking? Wheel. It's going to be a long one today. I'm still exhausted, but somehow I feel like, you know, when you're really overtired and you always get more like do a cell body chatty. Right, so my final whip, um, and this is actually my first yarn purchase of 2023. Um, my lovely friend Simona had a 15% um, off sale, 15% um, off sale, yeah, um, of Sandness Yarn um, a few weeks ago. And one of my very, very best friends just had a little baby boy. And I always kind of knew that, um, I taught her to knit and it didn't stick for her, but I know she knows um, what it means to receive something hand knitted, how much work and time and effort goes into making, um, you know, a full garment for someone. And um, so far I, I have given her a pair of Sunday socks, which I think both her and I forgot. Um, for little for little baby boy but um but there's no one else that's made any major garments so I always kind of knew that I wanted to make a garment I bought ages ages ago uh, No Frills Knitting which is a yarn shop in Bristol she was selling out some um Sanders booklet uh booklets for slightly like reduced cost and without even thinking about it I was like probably can't go wrong with buying my like, baby patterns and a booklet. Um, I don't know if I've shown this before, I probably have, but um, it's probably not gonna show you that very well. But basically it just has a load of 
um, like knitting patterns. It has um, like two just like very basic stock in it, stock in it where you have a cardigan and a little pair of bloomers. Then you have some um, broken rib stitch. Um, I called this pair if it, maybe it's not maybe something different anyway it looks like the friday sweater basically so with that you have a blanket um some trousers um a little hat a cardigan then you have some lacy bits um oh yeah you have two different kinds of bloomers and two different yarns you have like a pair of tights with lace down the side you have a panda sweater a bear sweater some like trousers, another blanket, blah, 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 blah. Like basically you get loads of really useful, like bath free baby patterns that are fairly unisex. Because um, I think knitting for girls is somehow easier because you can just knit something really frilly. But I find for boys, it's, I found it slightly harder when she was having a boy. I think it's because, um, the closer side of my family were all girls <laughs> and so I don't think I was quite prepared for what you would knit a little little boy and yeah all of this is quite simple and it also means that a lot of these patterns as I said kind of have similarities to um some of the petite knit patterns um but just you know good classics that you could easily put your own spin on but with a nice like inspiration so well this pattern booklet is from No Frills Knitting I had, I've been speaking to a few people about what I'm making and um, therefore I also know that No Frills Knitting no longer sells it, I checked on her website, however um, Knit does sell it, it's called, I think it's translated to Soft Start which makes sense but it's Mix Start is what it's called, 2108 I think um, and yeah it's available on Knit's website last time I checked the pattern booklets are seven forty five when you buy them from it, and um, you have to buy three skeins of Sandler's yarn, but any combination. So, if you are picking up um, Sandler's of some description, some Sandler's yarn for another project, then this booklet I think is perfect for gift knitting. So, what I'm making is this, which I'm hoping you can see. It's a little panda sweater. Um, it also has a little hat. I am really hoping this is in focus or you're going to see some magical post editing puppets. Um, but essentially it's a sweater where you knit, it's a, a, a basic, it's a, a classic um, raglan sweater. Um, I can hold up my actual project. It's a classic raglan sweater in that you knit the neckband. Um, they suggest you sew it down probably to retain a bit more stretch. Um, hopefully this is big enough to fit over a one-year-old's head um, and then once you finish the neckband you do some uh, short rows um, where you start the raglan increases you finish raglan increases put stitches on hold and then you knit the body and then what you do is that you use duplicate stitch um, to create the pattern so last night, as I said, I'm always trying to break up these kind of daunting tasks or tasks that I know will be less mindless or require me to look or tasks that I have to be in the mood for. So I already sewed down the neck band um, because it looks nice on the ground too, doesn't it? But um, I actually also just did it because I think it's a, a better feel for what it looks like. So the pattern didn't say, but I just left a long, a long tail um, when I cast on and just used that. Um, so you have one end less to weave in. And then um, last night on this side, you can see there is the little little tip of the um, bear. Um, I should say this is called Bjarnagenta um, from Sandness, um, or the bear sweater. That's what I translate to from Norwegian. Um, I do apologise for my Norwegian pronunciation. As a native Danish speaker, I am aware that is probably more like Bjarnagenta. But I, my Norwegian, it's not good enough for that. So we're just going to stick with Bjorn and Ginza. Um, but yeah, I finally did the duplicate stitch last night, which I've never done before. And I don't know if I love how it looks. I'm kind of hoping it's one of those where blocks, like blocking th fixes everything. It certainly could look a lot worse than it does, I think. Like you can't see that top colour through it, um, which 
I'm quite chuffed with. Um, so as you can tell, I've marked up where the second one will go. And then you just have the face down here, so I'm hoping to do that in the next few days. Um, I decided to go quite... Um, the original pattern, if I pop that up again. Uh, the original pattern, it goes for like a dark brown and this kind of subshell colour with a black face and I don't know, I thought it was a little bit beige for me and for my friend who has also obviously been in on the colours. So I just wanted something a little bit more interesting. Now the hard thing about ordering yarn online is that you never really know what it's going to look like when it turns up. And I think I had expected, well basically I had ordered the Dusty Petroleum to start with, or Dusty Petrol maybe it's called. I'd ordered the Dusty Petrol to start with, which is like this but slightly more pastel -y and lighter. And unfortunately uh, Simona was like, I only have one skein left of that, would you like something else? And then I hate, I, I get decision paralysis. So that's why I ended up with the, the True Petrol, which is quite a bright colour, maybe slightly brighter than I would have picked in retrospect. But I feel like once it's all finished and the face is on, it's going to be quite a cute statement. And I reckon it is going to be quite a, a warm sweater. Um, the same for the bear. This turned up and was maybe slightly more, um, have that slightly yellow tint to it, like that kind of curry colour. Um, than I had probably envis envisioned, but we'll see what happens when it's all done. Um, I think it's hard to really imagine the finished product just now, and I'm just not used to picking colours for babies. Because it is a gift knit, um, another thing I justified to myself when um, Simona was doing the sale was that I had looked at picking another yarn. Since I have the booklet, I didn't need to buy Sandler's yarn to knit it. I just decided that for the cost of buying the original yarn, um, I you know, that's around the same. I think all in all, this will probably be about 30, 40 pounds, probably less, about 30 pounds. That's what I'm going to tell myself at least. I think each ball before the discount is about 650 and you need uh, six balls. So yeah, it's a little bit more. Oops. Um, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, but anyway, I just decided that I was going to be spending money on a present in some description anyway. So I may as well just pick the original yarn, pick the colours I wanted. Because I think now that the merino wool is here, I have knitted in Drops Merino Extra Fine, I think it's called. Which is also a DK Wee Superwash Merino, um, which is um, what this is knitted in. It's knitted in Sanders Khan um, Merino Wool, um, which is 100% Merino. Um, and yeah, to me it feels quite similar to that. So far I have knitted through one, um, one whole ball for the top part, broken a little bit into that petrol colour, and um, you can see how much I have left of my first skein of the brown colour. So I haven't knitted through all that much and I have already found my first knot, because the main reason I didn't want to go for Drops Merino extra, extra Fine is that the original pro project that I used that for, I found so many knots, and I'm not going to lie, I hate it, because you cannot knit, at least I have not found a way, you can knit in any knots in the ball of yarn into your knitting, so it means breaking the yarn every time, and personally, if I'm paying what Drops Merino Extra Fine is, I kind of accept that if I'm paying, you know, like three ball, like three pounds a ball, it's kind of okay. I do think it's kind of cheeky from Sanders considering the cost. So I have to see if it's just one knot, you know, happens in all yarn, and that it can be one knot, but I'm kind of hoping it's the last knot that I find because it's not cheap. Nevertheless, I did machine wash. Um, it looks in this little project bag. I wondered if I managed to put in here, yeah. When I did my gauge, swatch I also thought I better machine wash it um, because obviously being a super wash you you do have a tendency to get lots and lots of growth um, because when I'm so yeah I put it in the machine and when it came out and and I measured it I was about one stitch off and then I just did this to it gave it some good stretch a good pull and then I had bang on gauge and the reason I did that is that something I find it's easy to forget with superwash is that 
it gets heavy and so when this is going to be dripping wet all of this is going to pull and make it even bigger but you can you can already see now that without actually compromising the like denseness of the fabric very much I can already pull it and you know the baby was born very recently if it's not a true size one year I'm sure my my friend can use it before we do live in Scotland so I wouldn't be surprised if she can end up using it for me um so yeah that's why I decided I also have to say that um when it's blocked it feels a lot softer on your hands here it almost has that squeaky cotton feel and it's been so long since I've knitted in just one strand of super washable I don't think I'm kind of used to it and I don't actually think my tension looks all that even across it. Um, the funny thing is with this yarn, and I think it's a common thing, because when I look at the pictures really closely in the book, I noticed that I've knitted the samples have the same thing, but you essentially get one column of the knit stitches that is like a true, a true column. Yeah, you can probably see that. And um, I find that really interesting. Um, I guess it's something to do with the way the yarn is twisted as you knit it. But again, I'm sure blocking will fix all of my sins. Um, I don't have too much rowing out on the short post, but yeah. I feel like that's enough chat about baby pattern. So I bought the yarn for this. I also ordered a ball of Phil Colonna Alva, which I have not brought out. Um, and I bought that because I have some leftover knitting for olive merino in my stash and um i thought i'd buy that and see if maybe they would go together and i haven't even checked yet because guess what i didn't need any more yarn but i bought the alva because if i was to use one of the balls or even more of them for a baby garment i feel like um i have some patterns um there's a danish designer called jormostrik who has made these very cute gotta stitch patterns with like little ears on them and I love little ears hence why I am planning to make the matching hat um with the pen or with the bear sweater if there's enough yarn um but all of those patterns quite a few of them recommend putting in moiha into baby knits now if it was my own baby I would feel more confident in when I would feel ready to let my baby wear a moiha but I feel like for other people's babies, and again, that's also why I bought Superwash, because if I was to knit for my own child, I would probably, instead of the merino wool, have gone for like a knitting for olive heavy merino or Ethel Kalana Peruvian Highland wool. But then I also feel confident that um, I could always try a machine, you know, to machine wash a swatch and see if my machine could handle it. Or I could just hand wash it and I'm fine with that because I hand wash my own garments. But I am conscious that when you gift to other people, and I did ask and she preferred something that could be washed in the machine, that it's, you know, better to fit, you know, to to buy yarn that fits them. Um, the final thing I ordered when I did that order was um, another Sanders booklet. This, I feel like, has been very hyped up. It is the Mutadema uh, 2202. Um, and it has the, um, well, I can show you this page. Let's see, hold that up. That's, that's in focus, I think. So it has lots of women's patterns in it. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's seen Knitting Traditions do quite a few of these patterns. And um, especially the Amy slipover when she made that, I loved it. There's also the Gansi Gensen here, which is quite nice. Um, actually the sock pattern in here, in here is quite nice so I picked that up because as I said you need to order three balls of yarn um, three balls of sandwich yarn um, before you can buy the booklet and this hasn't been in stock for quite a long time so yeah I decided to pick that up and I now own two booklets look at me <laughs> um, I will also say what Sanders does so well is that the like photos in these it's like a little magazine I love it I should probably buy a lean magazine I was gonna I would love that wouldn't I um and I kind of like even just flicking through it and thinking about it there is a pattern that I've not seen I don't I haven't looked it up yet on the hashtag but I reckon would be quite useful I have so much 
leftover my hair and this is like meant to be um like knitted in several strands of my hair create that kind of stripy look i think that could be quite nice so that might be coming up and finally um i recently met up with venicia from the woolly worker um i will knit her knitting podcast down below because she has also started knitting podcasts um we came in touch because she messaged me when she heard that I lived in Inisco. I no longer live in Inisco, unfortunately. It's a very expensive place to buy. Um, but I used to live there before we bought the house. And she's like, oh, I'm moving there. You know, I just thought I'd reach out. And then we agreed to meet for coffee. And on a Friday, we met and I brought the little Venice, who is sound asleep next to me. And um, I was talking about other things I was going to show in acquisitions and I realised I didn't show you this last time and it's just a shout out that sometimes the cheapest and simplest knitting accessory purchases can be so worth it this is maybe 150 i'm not sure but it's um interlocking stitch markers and um it's obviously as you can tell lots of different colors and these have come in so handy um I use these a lot more than light bulb stitch markers. If I'm not using the round ones that go on your actual needles, I have quite a few plastic ones for those. But if I'm not using that, I prefer to use these kind because it's, um, you know, if you have to mark something up on a needle, if you have to like, so like, you know, for the bare sweater, I use it to mark up where the face is going, etc., etc. It's just so easy. And it was like four quid on Amazon and, um, as Vanessa said, the funny thing about being a knitter is that often you spend a fortune on yarn and then be like, four pounds for stitch markers? Mm, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, these have been a good purchase so far. And so far, oops, sorry Fela, and sorry viewers. And so far, um, that's really all the, the big purchases that I have planned for this year. I know the, the, the Perth Festival of Yarn is obviously coming up in September. And I am wondering if I should maybe go. It's still quite a long time away, so I can knit through more of my stash and maybe kind of think about what I would like to buy. Um, but until then, I don't really foresee myself buying any sweater quantities because I have um, quite a lot. And um, yeah, so there probably won't be any acquisitions for a long time besides, um, besides what I just showed you. I might have to buy a second strand here and there, but we're not there quite yet that I think it's necessary. And that's basically all the knitting stuff. Um, a quick update on life. I will keep it short um, because I am doing much better now that spring has sprung. Um, we have just had the Easter weekend. Um, ben didn't take any days off. So on Friday, as I said, I went to CrossFit in the morning and then I met with Venicia and the Nithko and I brought the little menace whose belly I'm rubbing down here. Um, I brought her along and um, it was really nice to see her. And um, I sort of spoke to Lizzie for quite a few hours on, oh, oh, baby, quite a few, she just rolled over. Oh, there's a chocolate. Um, now you have lipstick on your face, that's not very nice. Um, and on Saturday we did lots of garden work all day and then I spoke to Lizzie in the evening, which was so lovely. We just spent hours talking about all on nothing important all at the same time. And um, yeah had a chill chill Sunday did some more garden work because we finally had some <clears throat> warmer weather and then yesterday I had actually planned to rest and because we'd done so much work outside I like well we hadn't really done that much work inside and the house was just too messy so I ended up stressing myself out by putting pressure on myself to tidy everything up and clean and basically didn't get any rest time in and that was definitely a mistake and um on friday i managed to pour something in my thigh at crossfit thought it gotten better i need to go to crossfit this morning and in the medcon have it happen again so i'm gonna take a week's rest and hope whatever thing i've pulled in my thigh gets better but it's really frustrating because I'm finally getting into the habit and I'm really enjoying it and then that's just the last thing that you need um, and my sciatica has been acting up as well so um, today I decided it's time um, this is my commitment from me to you um, or my commitment 
like, you know, I like to set myself goals at the end of these videos because I have to pick it up next time. Um, is that I'm gonna, I used to use an app called Down Dog, which is basically a like personalized yoga app. So you essentially tell how long a session you want, what your focus wants it to be. And then it generates you a yoga class, which I just really like. It's very fat free, easy to set your focus, the length, the style, the voice, all of these things. And I did that um, a bit during the pandemic and I thought it was about time because with my back acting up, whatever I've done to pull a muscle, all of this, I clearly just need to stretch more. So that's what I'm gonna start doing. And um, I can't lie, um, this spring weather has just, it makes everything better. And now I just need to sleep more so that I'm not as tired as I've been today. Um, so you've had an extra rambly version of me, so hopefully that's been enjoyable. <laughs> and um, I'm excited to go home soon and see everyone. Um, so that's really what's coming up here. And that's it. And um, I might go give the dog a little snuggle. And then I will see you all next time. Let me know how you're doing, what you're working on. Um, I always love to read that in the comments and I will see you next time. Yeah. Bye.